Hey tribe, welcome to the HGDC HG Designs Crochet Podcast. Today is all about Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I'm so excited. I can't wait to show you everything. So first things first, you can find me on social media. I am on Twitter, HG Designs Crow, C-R-O. And every Wednesday I host the HGDC Makers Moment Chat where all like-minded people, yarny people, uh, come along and we tweet and there's always a topic. So if you're on Twitter, join that. I also have a Facebook page, a blog, an Etsy shop for my sock boxes. If you want a yarn um, sock box subscription, I'm your gal. And you can also find my previous vlogs. I'll either post links up here or they're in the playlist below. So, Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Ah, I'm still so excited. Today is Wednesday and I got back on Monday and I still can't get over it all. Um, I did a little bit of recording whilst I was there. I recorded the marketplace for you. I've recorded... I recorded different stalls, the yarn frenzy. I did a bit of a vlog on day one and then I also did some recording of Edinburgh itself, um, which I'm going to put in throughout all of this. So let's take it from the beginning, shall we? I travelled down by coach, which took me about 11 hours from Leicester up to Edinburgh, not down to, up to Edinburgh. Um, the coach wasn't that bad if anybody feels put off by it. I I was fine when I booked it and then everybody else telling me, you know, what if you're stuck next to a smelly person? What if you're, I don't know, you know, you're stuck on that coach a long time. So by the time I went to get on the coach, I was dreading it, but it was fine. I had the double seats myself. Um, both there and back on both coaches so you go Leicester to Leeds you have an hour you swap and then you go on from Leeds up to Edinburgh um, there's a plug socket I plugged my iPad in I downloaded some films off Netflix and I was watching all sorts of random stuff I also watched some YouTube on my phone and I knitted the entire way and um, I took snacks with me I got a little bit of like hot food at Leeds and wandered around Leeds a little bit. The coach was not a problem and it was so much cheaper than the um, train and the plane which is why I chose to go that way. So the coach, fine, no worries there. Um, it was a little bit travel weary after sitting still for so long but it was a lot of time to knit. Um, so on the way up there I started a pair of socks which I frogged three times, restarted three or four times um, and I got off an 11 hour coach trip with about this much knitting. <sighs> then I got there on the Thursday and I got into Edinburgh, sort of like their city centre um, coach station, bus station and literally had a two minute walk round to the hostel that I stayed in and again I can hear you all saying hostel but I stayed at the Baxter. I took a bit of footage of that as well. Also, whilst I'm alone, just a quick spin round of the hostel room. I've never stayed in a hostel before until last night and actually I was pleasantly surprised. So this is the Baxter. It's got these lockers here to lock away any valuables. Then it's got triple level bunks. One, two and down there three. Um, we've got a really nice mirror in there, in here. Um, this is a female only, it sleeps nine of us, there was five last night, it was fine, like no one snored, um, it was warm, it's not the best insulated place in that like, soundproofing, mm -mm. I could hear everyone walk up and down the corridor and outside the bars emptying their glass bin into the big bin at like one in the morning, definitely heard that, but brilliant.
really happy with my choice and I would definitely recommend that you stay here um yeah the Baxter is absolutely gorgeous it's really really stylish it costs a bit more than usual hostel so um, I think it was like £16 plus a night as the, the sort of £9 that you'd pay elsewhere but when I was looking through the pictures I chose to pay that amount because it looked stylish and respectable and nice um, I stayed in a nine bed dormitory, female only um, the first night there was only five of us and it was really peaceful, quiet um, I will say there's not much soundproofing in there, so I could hear people walking up and down the corridor um, and all that business. There was a, a pub on a corner and I could hear their glass bin being emptied all the time. Um, but it was a really, really nice place. It's got a fully equipped kitchen, breakfast was cooked for you in the morning. And it had a really, really nice lounge area, which I will go on to say that I spent a lot of time in. Um, so 10 out of 10 for the Baxter, I want to go back next year and that will be the place that I'll be looking to stay. Um, it was really central so it took like 10 minutes to get to the castle, 2 minutes to get up to Colton Hill, it was really close to the train station, the bus station, I got the train to Edinburgh Yarn Festival, so location perfect. Um, so I checked in Thursday evening, I dumped my bags and I went on a little wander. Um, and it was quite dark at this time, so by this time, so I took some footage of that, of the, um, all the lights and all the buildings. It just looked really, really nice. So I'll put that in for you. And then after I wandered around, I went and got some food. I went into just a Weatherspoons by myself and I had dinner. Again, that doesn't bother me. I've travelled alone before. Um, it feels a bit weird at first, but I eat alone at home. So what's the difference if I go to a restaurant and eat alone? Um, and I'm hungry. If I'm hungry, I'll eat. I don't really care. So I had a meal there, cheap as chips and... Then went back to the hostel. Well, actually, I wandered around a little bit to make sure I knew how to get to the train station and where the bus stop was so that I'd be ready for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I slept really well, but didn't really sleep in that. I was like, oh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival all night. And I wake up in the morning and I was like, I'm so tired, but Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So had my breakfast at the hostel. I went to the train station bought my ticket, I got my return, it was like £3.80, really really cheap um, and it was nine minute, a nine minute train so it's kind of like going from the city centre to one of your local stops, I don't know if that's what you've got in Leicester where you go out towards Leicestershire, it was like that with, within Edinburgh, so it was a nine minute train. Um, Um, and then I hadn't actually looked up how I was going to get from the train station to the corn exchange but it said on the website a two minute walk so I thought I'll wing it but as I got off the train there was just hordes of women just legging it down to this building that I could vaguely see so I followed the crowd Um I got my hot drink before going on the train because it was so so cold Edinburgh it's just so cold. Um, it was like zero and then my phone was saying, feels like minus six, feels like minus nine. Um, we got snow, we got snow blizzards, 20 mile per hour winds. Cold. Um, so 
I get to Edinburgh Yarn Festival at the Corn Exchange and I got there about, the doors open at 10 and I think I got there about half nine maybe. I had intended to get there earlier but I didn't read the train to train at times right missed one and then meant I had to get there for about half nine my queue wasn't that bad I'd say I was like and I'm not very good at measurements but I was like what should we go with I don't know 400 meters from the front that sounds a lot it wasn't that far from the front <laughs> don't know what to measure it in um I could see like the front doors basically and the queue and I wasn't that far back. I think um, we queued maybe for about 45 minutes to an hour um, and it was freezing cold and I wasn't quite dressed for that. Um, but you know we didn't like I didn't expect it to be that cold and we are in March it should be warmer and the, one of the girls that I was queuing with said that last year it was so much warmer and Everyone was just in their knitwear, like jumpers, they didn't need a coat. And this year we were like huddling, jumping on the spot. Um, so I'm queuing and I'm cold and I'm losing the, the circulation to my little finger, which is going numb. But it's still hurting me, so I'm not worried. Like there's still some feeling there. Don't need to panic yet. And some man comes out in a suit and says, I don't mean to alarm you all, but you should have read the website. Um, this is a sold out event. And we shouldn't be letting you in so you might not get in today wait hold up the website says that everyone that queued last year got in so we're all you know WTFing and then it comes out about 10 20 minutes later just so you know you we will get you all in it's just that anyone that has a ticket gets priority So I don't really think he knew what he was doing and um, he also said no smoking outside because it might taint the fabric or whatever it is you're queuing up for. Hello? We're queuing up for wool because it's Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Who put you in charge? So after him winding us up, which did warm me up a bit I guess, we um, kind of were told we might have to queue about an hour. I think I got in about by about 20 past 10, half 10 I was in there. Um, so I've got a few videos of like the queue. It doesn't look that big from where I am because I'm quite close to the front, but it was just snaking massively behind me. And I came out at about half 12 for a breather and people were still queuing. So definitely get there early if you don't manage to get pre-sale tickets like I didn't manage to either. Um, So as I'm going in, I'm getting more and more excited. Um, you have to pay your entry and then go to the cloakroom. I decided to hold off on the cloakroom because I had to go past it to get my ticket and then I was just like, right, I'm off. Um, and then you go in, you get your wristband. I have one of my wristbands. I have them both actually. You've probably seen pictures of all the ladies with wristbands on. And some blokes as well. Um, so this was my EYF Friday 10am admission, it's neon yellow so they will all go in my journal um, and then that was it, I was in. So I had a game plan, I knew what I wanted to do, I knew what my mission was for the visit so mission objectives number one see all the yarn, squish all the yarn, feel all the yarn, see how much I can bring home with me. Um, number two, I wanted a mini from Mothy and the Squad called Heather. And number three, I wanted a, vid a picture with Stephen West, West Knits, um, and one of his resting knit face bags or the pin. So I had my game plan. I went in and I was like, right, I'm just gonna have a wander around and see what's here. Wow. That place was busy, like uh, people had been in half an hour before me and it was already filling up. There was no wandering around, like it was so busy. Um, 
So I did a few laps as best I could around the place, wandering around, having a look. Um, and I did see Westnitz as soon as I walked in, but I had a red nose from the cold, so I couldn't get my photo then. So I had to just keep wandering till I'd thawed out a little bit. Okay, so I thawed out, found Mothy in the squid, found my Heather mini that I wanted. So it's called Heather. Um, I wanted this because I'm called Heather and if anybody has looked at my blog recently www.hgdesigncrochet.co.uk you will see I did a post all about the yarn um, out there called Heather at the moment. So that's a really nice single 75% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon um, and it's purples it's got like a neutral base and then it's got the purples, the pinks um, and then like that dark purple kind of indigo. So I really, really wanted that. That was part of my game plan. So I secured that and then they had a sign. Three minis for £10. So I was like, well, when in Rome or Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So I picked up three. She says that and then can only see two. Oh, here we go. Um, my minis are for my luxury pink blanket that I'm making for myself and I'm going to use the Sandra Cherry Heart Happy Scrappy Crochet Blanket, um, which I spoke about in previous vlogs. So pinks, purples is the colour scheme and I went with these three from Mothy and the Squid and the camera is blowing out a little bit. So that's the Heather one which is the pinks and the purples and slight indigo. Come on camera. And then I went with this one, Violet Spotted Reef something. And that is this really bright pop of sort of orange, coral, pinks, purple. Really like this. Um, it's one of the brighter ones. So there's two. And then for the third one, it went even brighter and it's called Fruit Prunch. And it looks like fruit salad sweets, which I was eating a lot while I was there. So it's sort of the peach, the coral and, and the pop of neon pink. So I've got those three from Mothy and the Squid. So that's part one of my game plan done. And then I was then on a mission as I was wandering around to spot which stores had minis because I want to get minis. So these are my existing ones that I've shown you before for my pink blanket. And I've now got those to add in. Um, it's missing one from my sock box actually. So as I was wandering around I was spotting all of these amazing stores and I've got the venue map here. There were so many ven vendors rather. Sunlight always has to fight me. So I hadn't really heard of a lot of these or if I had I've never seen them so one of my th my part of my game plan was to just go and feel the different fibres and see what was there. Um, a lot of the time sometimes I'll order something online and I don't actually know what it's going to feel like or the quality until it arrives so it's a really really big plus of going to something like this. So that's the layout. Um, and I just sort of kept wandering around and around and around. Um, I definitely wanted to go see Coop Knits, though we didn't say hello to her or be like, I follow you on Twitter and we talk, because I felt a bit weird. Um, I really wanted to see La Bien Ami because I've heard so much about it. I wanted to see, um, I just wanted to see so many of them basically. And so I wandered around and I've got loads and loads and loads of footage, which I will put in for you. Um, I'm going to have to put music over some of it because it was just so noisy in there. So here's a lot of the footage for you to see.
Um, and then as I was wandering around finding yarn that I wanted to squish, I squished everything, but I came across um, Ripple yarns and I was really, really impressed with them and I put down a skein of sock yarn. I kind of regret putting it down now and I kind of wish I'd picked it up, so I definitely think I'll be ordering from there in the future. It was really nicely priced, the colours were really nice. That one just really stuck out for me. I also really liked um, Rusty Ferret, though I don't like saying the name. I feel weird saying I touched a Rusty Ferret, but I touched a lot of Rusty Ferret yarn, and that was really, really nice. And again, the colours really shouted at me. Um, I kind of feel like I should have got a Coops knit skein as well, but as I picked up a neon mini, mini, neon mini, a neon mini from elsewhere, I decided not to get hers. They were kind of should have. And again, I was going to get the sock, but the sock patterns. But I've got loads that I haven't used, so again, I didn't. But it's definitely something in the future that I am going to be getting hold of and get signed as well. So I wandered around. I grabbed a couple of minis, not many, 
um, I was more sort of looking at what was there and looking at all the different yarn, King or Ching or however you want to say it, Q-I-N-G, some of that was so fluffy, um, yeah, wandered around and then I was like, right, it's time and I went to the Stephen and Penelope um, stall stand booth and I got myself my picture with West Knits. So I'm not a massive fan girl, but I do really, really appreciate that he's so different, he's so out there and he puts himself out there in his knitwear, something I really, really admire in him. So I wanted to get the picture, which I did. And also I wanted the pin or the bag. And I decided to go with the tote bag I've got the resting knit face tote bag, which he also signed for me. So I've got the resting knit face since forever signed by Stephen West. The only thing is now that it's signed, I don't really want to use it. It's already got a few marks on it and I'm never going to be able to wash it because it will lose his signature. He signed it in a sharpie, so will it stay? So I got the rest of Knit Face large tote bag, um, which I then, after seeing him and feeling a little bit tired from, I think I've been walking around for like three hours, I went to get some food. Everyone knows I have 101 out of days, and there wasn't really anything suitable in the venue, so I went across the road to Greg's um, and got some food but it was actually really quiet so it was quite nice to be able to just gather yourself because whoa the yarn frenzy I'd heard about it but some of the ladies in there were just going absolutely mental like scooping it up and just scooping more up and paying for it and then as they're paying grabbing more in and just and I was a bit like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But then I found myself being caught up where I was like, well, I have to have all of this. <laughs> so there's a couple of things that I now look at thinking, why have you brought that? It was just a, such a frenzy and such a hype that I was like, yep, I need one. So I went back in, checked in my um, coat and bag and just put a few things in that tote bag. And then that meant I could wander around better and like actually get to the front of the store. Cause I had quite a big bag and I just couldn't get very close to the front. Um, I definitely prefer the stores where they hang some of their work, some of their yarn or anything up. So you can see without having to be up close looking at the table. Um, Nabi and me did quite well because they had table like that like in an L shape and then like two or three people within the stall working and then another lady walking around to help so that worked really well um everyone had different setups but definitely hanging space helped um so then I started going back and getting my minis um now I got this neon pink from easyknits.co.uk it is bright pink. Um, it's pretty much a solid though. It does look slightly, you can't see that at all, slightly lighter in places. So just to show you the haul as it grows, it's definitely a brighter pops there. Um, then I went to Martin's Lab. I'd never heard of Martin's Lab, um, but I was squishing the yarn and really enjoying it and they had a huge tub of minis, which I've got a picture of. And I dived in and decided to get myself a little deal. So it was five minis for 17 pounds or something, I don't know. So I picked up the minis. Now, I went straight in with the neon because you know you can't have enough neon. Um, it is ever so slightly more neon than the first neon from Easy Knits. It is 20 grams, but they're just um, wound a lot tighter than say these. 
So I went with the neon pink. Um, then I went for the another coral. Now neon pink is hot fuchsia and this one is a zinnia. It's a really nice sort of orangey coral um, and then it's got these specks of dark orange and a little bit of black and grey um, and I wanted to sort of be able to bridge the gap between the mothy and squid coral and pinks. Um, so the Martins Lab is our, it's their Tough Sock Mini, again it's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, um, and that's their little logo. Then I went for this one which is called Agar's, Agar's, Agar's Wish, we'll go with Agar, Agar's Wish which is a more of a dusky pink speckled with orange um, and it's got the slightly darker bits again that I really like. So we're looking like this at the moment. And then I went for this more faded one. This is called Tenerife on the Tough Sock again. It's much lighter so it's got more of a grey base, a very pale cream grey base and it's lilac and it's got these bright pops of blue and pink and I had that in mind because I've got from the fibre factory the more paler, I hope this is showing up, skeins um, which I'm going to blend throughout the brighter skeins. So. That was number four, and then number five, I went for Candy Sparrow, and that's a much darker grey, but it's got pops of pink and turquoise. So, although the main colour is going to be pink, I just would quite like to work in some of these colours, and I really like that as a speckled yarn. It's got a lot of pink, turquoise, there's a tiny bit of yellow and orange in there, which will help pull in with some of the other colours. So there's five from Martin's Lab, and again, he's based in Poland, and I'm unlikely to buy any of that. For my sock box, I always source UK suppliers, um, and I don't know if I'm ever going to visit Poland anytime soon. So, more minis to go with more minis. Um, now, this is where I have to remember where they're from because they're not tagged. I did pick up some cards, so... This one is labelled, so we'll go with it, although it's starting to unravel. Um, this is the Sleek It Hair. Don't know how you say it, sorry. It's 100% super wash, blue face, Lester wool. Um, and it again is this grey, grey base, completely grey, with pops of fuchsia pink and a lighter pink. And I just wanted to try and, you know, meld all of these colours in a little bit better. Um, I, it's artfully flattering yarns, hand dyed in Argyll, Scotland. And I did, part of my game plan was to come away with some Scottish wool because I was in Edinburgh. So I've got that to go with it. Then I also picked up these three. And I don't remember which one's which. So I'll just show you both. I got Queen of Pearls, which is the based in Glasgow, so I got more Scottish yarn. And I got the Rainbow Heirloom. Um, and I want to say that this was Rainbow Heirloom. I'm really sorry if I've got it the wrong way. Um, this reminds me of like Blossom or something. So a neutral base again. Lots of pink, bits of green, um, 
really nice colours, pop of green, there isn't any, well there's a, a darker green, a lighter green sorry in this one, I haven't really introduced much green, reminds me of like blossom, apple blossom, um, I don't know the colourway because it's not tagged, and that one's a lot more neutral than some of the others, so going forward I will be looking for more of the lighter background with the with the pinks and the greens just to me meld in a bit more veil but anyway I've got all of these minis to go into my blanket to go along with one two three four five six I don't know now they're my river knits It might be this one that I also brought. But anyway, I'm already starting to lose count. Oh! I've got all of this now to go in my mini blanket. Um, why is it when I cover my feet, the light's better? So I've got all of those. Um, I think what I'm going to do is put a white patch in between all the colours just to make it pop and make it go a bit further so that was the part one really part two I'd say um part one was squish all the yarn so you was there number two was to get minis to add to this blanket so tick tick number three was the rest in knit face at seen Stephen West um I did look at his pattern books, but everything's so bright that I can't ever see me making them. I'm not really a shawl lover. Um, I will make the mild moon your leggings at some point though, but they'll be a lot darker. Then I saw Coop Knits, as I said. These are all going in my journal. Um, Martin's Lab gave me some patterns, so they a hat. And they gave me a shawl pattern. Uh, then there's a toft. Oh, I went to the toft store and I saw more lag. He's cute. And then I'll put a picture in of, of the giant more lag. He's so cute. Um, and there's a toft hat as well. Um. I went to the crochet project store because they're the only crochet related things really in there. Everything, there was a much bigger emphasis on knitting and you didn't see anybody crocheting there at all. Um, and there's a few patterns, one of them I already have so I didn't purchase anything but I'd definitely be keeping an eye on them. And again I didn't know the crochet project existed so things like this are really really good. Um, and then I went to the Pom Fest pom-pom stand and I've never got the hype really I've never you know I've heard a lot about them but I've never really been all that interested and as I walked forward I saw a jumper and a hanger on their rail and I had to I had to have my own one so I purchased pom-pom I think this is the winter 2017 one they said um a magazine i have never been into them honestly i had to have this it's definitely 2017 yeah it's winter 2017 um and the pattern is called the tabula i also love that i had a girl a black girl model in it i was kind of like yeah so the tabula I love it, it's got this panel design on the front, so let's find the front on picture. It's um, a very, it's like a cropped crop jumper, which I like, so it sort of stops at just below waist, or maybe waist actually, which is perfect for me. Um, and then it's got this front design on it, which has got, um, that block, these two blocks and the triangle 
and they've done theirs in a really light grey which I think I'd probably do mine in and then I want to do all of this in different shades of pink so I picked that up um, and it's got a really nice description of it which I just wanted to read to you um, which states High-end knitwear design elements are bound in this colour block showstopper which is knitting pieces with a modular front panel and smooth garter stitch edgings. The construction is playful with no need to suffer for fashion. A muted palette can work just as well as polychromed brights. Just be sure to use yarns with great st stitch definition to capitalise on the shapes and varied textures. Tabular crystals are blocky said to transfer energy easily through their flat shapes, building figurative figurative bridges and improving communication. We like to think that they prove that nature invented colour blocking in a dark crystal cave somewhere long before Warmans walk Warmans? Humans walked upright. I just really like it and I really like that looking through the hashtag and looking at what's being made. It's also got the socks in there. Fluorite. So I picked that pattern this book up. I did have a quick look on Ravelry and the tabular pattern was £8 by itself so I quite like to have them in physical print and there's some really nice things in here that I could potentially see myself making in the future so I also got that and then as I bought a tote bag I kind of thought well, I've got to get on this pin badge hype because you know you have to jump on the trends so I picked up the Edinburgh Yarn Festival one which is this brightly coloured hat that's the 2018 one um, that's one of the purchases that I feel I got drawn into because it's not really my colour scheme but I wanted something that really that I would point to and say I've got that in Edinburgh so there we go and I kind of wish I had a woolly hat that day then I got my Yak Yarn Badge I wanted one of their minis and rather than getting the badge I probably should have got one of their minis. Um, so then well, I've got another badge but I didn't buy it in the yarn festival so I should show you when I do my sightseeing bit. Um, I picked up Pom Pom magazine, that's the last thing that I, that I purchased, no second last, on the way out I went to however it was that was outside I bought that mini from. So where are you M9? Rainbow Heirloom. I was right. Rainbow Heirloom. Where's your tag gone? I brought, I'm pretty sure I got this from you. That's the last purchase I made on my way out but my second last was pom pom I didn't have it in me to go back in and find the yarn for it which I kind of kind of wish I had but anyway I have I can do it at a later date and now that I've seen vendors I know what I would buy online so it was really really good um then I left Edinburgh Yarn Festival about I think about four o'clock it closes at half five and I was just completely wiped out Buzzing, but completely wiped out because it's so busy. Um, yeah, I went back to the hotel and I spoke to lots of lovely people. So I should mention I went into the podcasters' lounge um, and I saw like Amy from Stranded and other people, but I didn't say hello. I sat down at random tables because on my own, and everyone was really like talkative and inviting. And then I also ventured into the um, Marky, and I've got footage of it all to show you. This was just a huge amount of people just sitting and knitting, and it was it was great. I absolutely, yeah, so good. It was a great atmosphere. It was just so noisy. I kind of came out there a little bit like, oh, um. I went back to the hotel and I, I did some vlog footage, which I will put in now for you. Hey tribe, Edinburgh Yarn Festival has happened. Wow, 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 wow. Hey tribe, 
Welcome to the HGDC Little Podcast. I have just got back from Edinburgh Young Festival. It's the 16th of March. I have been there all day and I'm now back in the hostel and I just wanted to check in with you. Um, the girls are out of the room at the moment. I don't know how long I've got and I don't know who can hear me, so I feel a little bit weird. Um, wow. Wow. If you haven't been to Edinburgh Young Festival, I have loved it. My first ever festival and I will be going to more. Um, who knew you could put so much yarn in one place? Headphones for the microphone. Um, what can I say? Edinburgh Yarn Festival is amazing. It set the bar so, so high. Um, people have flown in from Australia. New York, um, Ireland and international, God knows where, I've had so many different accents, um, so many different languages, so it must be good for people to fly. One lady was saying that she flew in from um, Australia, it took her three days because she lived in rural Australia, that is how good every Yarn Festival has been, it set the bar so high. Um, I'm so cold. Will I ever be warm again? I'm sat on the radiator. I'm so cold. It's minus two today. I have been in freezing conditions, but let me tell you, it's been worth it because, because of all the yarn. Um, I've squished so much yarn that I just either didn't know existed or I just haven't had the privilege to squish. So, Stephen and Penelope, um, Rusty Ferret, Ripple, Quing, Ching, um, Mossy and the Squid, just so many yarns and I found so many that I want to purchase. Um, if there's one thing that Edinburgh has taught me is that I need more knitwear, more crochet, hand knit, handmade clothing in my life because it's cold. Um, yeah, wow, there's just so much to tell you. I've had an amazing day. It has been so much fun. I have seen so much. I've brought so much and I've met some really lovely people as well. Everyone was really talkative and really friendly and yeah. I've just, I just love it. Another thing that I have experienced, witnessed, is the yarn fume frenzy. The women going absolutely butt poop crazy for all the yarn and just throwing it, just wow. Like, jumping in and dropping huge amounts of money and I'm jealous that I couldn't do that but also whoa <laughs> rain yourself in whoa I've got my bag of goodies on my bunk rest in knit face best believe it's signed too wanna see let me just get down I don't have the greatest skin at the moment. I've got a spot. I never get spots. What is that? Um, and I have a rash all up my face from some sort of allergy. I have just covered it in makeup. And I've got a red nose because it's cold. It's so, so cold. I can't even tell you how cold it is. It's that cold. Um, but yeah, I just oh, almost dropped you. What else can I tell you about? It wasn't as busy as I expected it to be. It There was lots and lots of people. There was quite a lot of queuing, but it was really well organised. And everyone was so lovely and talkative and inviting. Um, and there's so much to do there. 
I could easily go tomorrow and spend the entire day there again. But it's not friendly for my purse because I've spent a lot. And I want to see some of Edinburgh. And I've got to meet the chef just on Sunday. Um, yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Just not coherent at all. <laughs> Edinburgh Young Festival. Whoop whoop. So this is my bunk. The middle bunk. And what's that I spy? What is that? Oh, yes. That's my resting knit face signed. Signed. Booyah. So my plan for this evening is to go through my purchases. Um, I've got so many amazing things. And then to get warm, like to step away from the radiator, which can you see I'm like hugging and once I'm warm go meet a few people for food and then I just want to sit and knit and sit and crochet and just enjoy my evening and is it really bad that I've I've seen the works and it looks huge here and I want to go check out the books <laughs> I started a pair of socks on the way up here and I, f I frogged them three times. I had to restart three times in effect. And I've just got past the toes and about an inch of the foot. So I would like to be able to say when I get back from Edin Edinburgh Yarn Festival that I've made a pair of socks. So I'm going to crack on with those this evening um, with like lots of hot chocolate and just try and keep my circulation going. Did I tell you that... <coughs> With queuing to get into Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I lost all circulation to my little finger. It was like ghostly white and my nail was just blue. Because it's minus two. It's so cold. Did I mention it's so cold? <laughs> um, and I went back to the hostel to drop my stuff off. And then I kind of thought... I don't want to go back out in the cold. I'm so, so cold. And I've just seen in my vlog, I was sat on a radiator as I was talking. So I decided that I was going to go into the lounge, um, which was really, really nice in the back stand. It had like this built-in nook area that you could fully just stretch out. And it was so warm and snug and surrounded by pillows and fluffy throws. So I went in there and as I went in, one of the members of staff said, oh, there's another knitter here that's gone to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And then um, I sat down, I was doing bits and pieces, updating my social media, and then this girl walked in and she had a fringe bag. So I was like, she's a knitter. And then she started like getting her knitting out and I went home and was like, did you go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival? And that was it. Instant friendship. Um, so I'm going to call her N because I don't think she'd like her name to be out here. So I sat with N that night and we were just knitting or whatever and then we decided about half ten. Let's go to the pub, you know, it's cold but let's go to the pub. So we went to a pub that's supposed to have like a really good dog atmosphere that people take their dogs in there but it was more club music atmosphere. So we walked straight back out, went into another pub and we ordered a cider and we sat and knitted in a pub on a Friday night, um, which was really, really nice. And we both made so much progress. And I also recorded one of the girls that was singing because she was so good and I wish I knew her name so I could find her on social media. So I'll put her in now. some special characters in there from the local population as you could tell um we left there went back to the hotel and then we arranged that we're going to do some sightseeing on the saturday so we could have done day two at the edinburgh yard festival 
but we'd both gone in there with our plans and we both knew what we wanted. For N, she wanted to get stuff for projects that she had queued on Ravelry. Um, so we went around Edinburgh, we did the Edinburgh Castle. Well, we went up there and then we took pictures and came back down because it was cold and the queue was huge. But we, we, we got there. We did Colton Hill, again freezing, I'll put all the footage in for you. And then we did um, Harry Potter shop. Mm. This has got to be my second highlight after the HP World because um, after Edinburgh Yarn Festival, it was just amazing, amazing. We've got loads of photos to put in here for you. So as you can see from the footage, the shop is amazing. Um, Anne and I are both HP fans. I was completely geeking out in there. Um, the mirror, Chamber of Secrets has been opened. There was a Dementor hanging up. There was just so much different merchandise and attention to detail was amazing. Um, and we both decided to get pins. As soon as I started a little collection, I wanted something Gryffindor and I got this one. 10 points to Gryffindor. Mm. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, I would definitely recommend that you go to the shop. Um, I'll put the name in the link below for you. It was number 40 Victoria Street. It's so easy to find right next to the castle. We walked from the castle there. Um, oh, it was just great in there. Definitely will go back. So then, after the Harry Potter shop, which I'm still buzzing about, you have to visit. I would say that it was a little bit busy when we got there, and um, there was a few people in there, quite a few, which meant that you couldn't quite see everything. Um, I would say get there early in your day, because I have heard that people queue to go in there. Then, what else did we do? We wanted to do Arthur's Seat, but it was sort of blizzard snow conditions and we both went to H&M to pick up scarves and woolly clothing. And yes, we're knitters and we should have had it all, but really, how is it even that cold up there in March? So, I know that next year I would definitely pack differently. Um, and on that note, another great thing about Edinburgh Yarn Festival, it was just seeing so many people's different styles, um, seeing what knitwear they've created, the colours they choose to put in it and trying to sort of peg where I feel I sit and where I fit and I just kind of came to the conclusion that I don't fit in and I don't sit with any of that, I'm just going to have to create my own and now I've kind of just accepted that, I'm fine with that so I started working on what items that I want to wear and what suits my style um, Em's got her own style and she really reminds me of like 1940s land girl really nice neutral earth tones um, and a bit of blush pink which I love and she rocks it really really well and I know I'm more sort of um, sporty type like hoodie gym wear type girl um, and 
when we was at the Meet the Shepherdess, which I'll talk about in a second, one of the ladies there was like, can you see anybody here that has your style? And I was like, nope. But when we went sightseeing, there was a girl outside the castle wearing an outfit where I was like, oh my God, I would wear that. And she had knitwear and clearly did. So that's been really good for me because I've always kind of looked at what people are making and think it's nice, but it's not what I would wear. So I just, I've started a little adventure now with finding out what it is that I feel I want to wear. Remaking my style or not remaking, but putting my style into my knitwear so I'm looking forward to showing you more of that and I've already started planning my outfit for next year because yes I am going back next year and hopefully I can go back as a podcaster that would be dream that's my goal so Saturday sightseeing Saturday evening, um, well Saturday afternoon we went back to the hostel, the Baxter, we did some hostel knitting um, in the comfy nook bit and then I Anne went and had a nap and I powered through and then she came out about two hours later and I could feel myself drooping. Um, we went back to a pub, we had food, but it was really really busy, that was it, it was St Patrick's Day. And it, yeah, it was really, really busy. So, and got a side eye, we came back to the hostel and we carried on knitting. And she made so much progress on a cardigan that she was making, it was unreal. And I just cranked out the socks. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna admit I did one crochet square and then one and a half pairs of socks. Yeah. Um, knitting one over. Then Sunday was Meet the Shepherdess, so it was like a, a sort of knit day, knit night at the um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival Corn Exchange in the Marquee. I think it was like 500 tickets and I already had one booked and decided to go along because it was just like blizzard, there was snow outside, we went past the Edinburgh Yarn Castle to get to the corn exchange, snow everywhere. Um, I think she originally wanted to do a hike, but it just wasn't really the conditions when you're not dressed properly. Um, although she did go by thermals, and I kind of wish I had. <laughs> um, so, meet the shepherdess. There was some more vendors there that had more of the local yarn. There was some really nice stuff, and I was so tempted to buy more, but I I refrained just because I want to, as I say, work more on my style and patterns that I feel I can see me wearing and work with my with my personality and then get the yarn for it, which is what I'm going to be doing at my next show I go to. Um, so there was plenty of vendors, there was lots to look and squish and I did squish and then there was, um, and I've got to find the name, it's is it Yisolda? I don't know how to say it. It's the very bottom one there in orange. Because we got in like quite early, 10 o'clock when it opened, we wandered into there and actually got a chance to look around whereas that was so busy, I didn't even know it was there on Friday. Um, and again, really, really nice stuff. There was some stuff that I squished and I was so tempted to get. And then we sat down and some ladies came and joined us and she went off and did some shopping and came back and she had that yarn. So that was really like, should I just go get it? But I didn't. Um, so we sat down at a table, it was really quite warm in there, um, having had a look around at some more yarn and sort of put more plans in my head. Um, and then it was just, did we get to sit and knit and chat and a couple of ladies came and joined our table, which was really, really nice. Um, the table of podcasters were like right next to us, so Skane Day Knits was sat there, um, Fruity Knitting, or yeah, there was just loads. Um, so we just cracked on with some knitting, and went and spoke to some lady that had a jumper that she really, really liked. Another lady that sat with us went to speak to another podcast that she loves. So yeah, it felt really good. Um, and then it finished at two. It was such an anticlimax because I kind of wanted someone to be like, thank you for coming to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Yay, woo! And just some man said, it's time to go now, ladies. Um, so then N left for her train at like four. And then I was back on my own. 
So I got food by myself again that night and I actually had quite an early night because I don't feel like I slept and I was just running off yarn adrenaline. Ready to come home on the coach on the Monday. Um, I've got a few pictures of like the snowy hills that I passed by. And then the one last thing to show you. I feel like I've been talking for ages and there's still stuff I've not told you about. So maybe I should have split this down. Um, I finished this pair of socks. Well, I haven't sewn the ends in, but they're finished. Um, I really like the socks that Sandra Cherry Heart does when they've got the tiny little bit of um, different coloured ribbon at the top, which I was going to do with this. But I love the extra long ribbing. Um, I put in a different heel on this just because the normal pattern I use doesn't allow for a contrast heel. Um, I just kind of did it off the bat. It's not the best heel I've ever put in. The second sock was definitely improved. Um, and maybe I should have ripped out that heel. But I'd already ripped out a gusset and I'd already like frogged three, four times. I've done enough ripping back. Um, so these were just some scrappy yarn socks, which was good in theory, but it meant I had to carry so much yarn. So, and I overpacked on yarn, FYI. I took two pairs of socks, I took 400 grams of yarn, in case I wanted to start a crochet jumper, and I took like 40 squares to remake. I made one square and one and a half pairs of socks, and I bought that much yarn that had I run out of yarn I packed, I could have just cast something on. So my packing would be different next year. But here's my sock, plural socks. Um, these are called my Monday blues. Monday? January blues. I started them in January and I finally cracked on with them. So the toe is in Truly Hooked um, Autumn Confettis. The blue is Opal. Um, I spoke about these before and this is Drops Fable. Um, they have worked up really, really well and I'm really pleased with them. I just need to sew all the ends in. Have you ever cast off on a coach? Because it's like this and you try not to drop your stitches and go over a bump and you've dropped the entire sock. So, pair of socks. My first pair of socks for me this year. The first pair of socks I made this year for my boss. So this is the first pair for me this year. So I've definitely got some catching up to do. And then I cast these on. But I can't decide whether to put a contrast heel in, so then they got parked. Um, I've done the gusset increases, which I don't really need to do if I'm going to put a heel in like this. So I think I'm just going to crack on, put the heels in, and just leave it like that. I had toyed with putting it in my mini, but I really want those for my blanket. So... I definitely think I'm going to do a vlog on things to expect and things to take to a yarn festival. This is my first festival away from home. So I've been to a couple in and around Leicestershire. This is the first one I've travelled to and I have picked up so many packing tips and um, like strategy for hitting an event and things like that. So I think I will do a separate vlog on that. So. I hope you've enjoyed my Edinburgh Yarn Festival vlog. I have had so much fun. I'm going back there next year. Fingers crossed I could go as a podcaster. Um, I have also, I'm going, I'm just going to all the festivals. I want to go to Pom Pom. Now I've picked up this. I want to go. Um, I want to go to Yarndale. That's more crochet. I'd like to go to Nottingham Yarn at yarn expo because it's so close and I'm open to other suggestions and has said something about one in Berlin so if I can find details on that then I'm gonna be like please can we go because I get to see another area of the world I get to travel and get yarn and traveling with another knitter is amazing because when we're a bit tired I'm like should we go get a coffee hot chocolate and knit and we did that at the National Gallery as well so Thank you for watching, um, 
thank you to all my new subscribers and thank you for my existing thank you for all the love find me on social media and comment below let me know what you think to my minis and what you think to Edinburgh Yarn Festival if you got to go and if not suggest festivals that I can go to thank you bye